Travis Nelson is a registered nurse with a degree in nursing from Washington State University. Welcome to Eye on Northwest Politics. Thank you, Ken. Happy to be with you. Now, you're the 10th person of color in the House, a former black caucus chair of the Democratic Party. Uh, being LGBTQ as well, how does that influence your approach to this job in the legislature? Well, I take all of that life experience and experience I have as a black caucus chair, um, being LGBTQ, and take that with me to the legislature to um, provide that unique perspective that's much, much needed. Um, I'm only the second black um, person in the house, and I will be the only black man in the house currently. So when it comes to ensuring that there's equity, um, I, I, I plan on speaking up. Now, to be clear, even though you replaced uh, Tina Kotek, uh, Democrats, they uh, chose Representative Dan Rayfield of Corvallis to be the House Speaker. Uh, that being said, what do you see as the priorities this session? Well, um, I think worker retraining, worker development, um, the houseless issue, and the um, cost of housing. When I talk to folks on the street and constituents in House District 44, um, they make it clear that the houseless issue, housing, and everything, including um, the COVID-19 pandemic, are paramount to them. So I think dealing with all of that is going to be real important during this short session. The state has almost uh, $2 billion to work with, with money from the feds. Do you think that will make this session easier or more difficult? Well, hopefully that money will make things easier. Um, you know, there's, there's big problems out there. Uh, we know that the housing and houseless issues are, are going to cost significant, are going to require significant investments. And um, I, I think it's a, it's a better thing when there's money to provide services and address the issues of constituents. Should we put some of that money away as a future cushion? Um, you know, there's so many problems right now. Um, I think we've got to do all that we can to invest in our uh, invest in our future and address these current problems. I mean, um, we've got to uh, put money uh, into housing, um, the houselessness issue, worker retraining. I'm a registered nurse. Um, we've got a huge problem right now with there not being uh, enough nurses in our hospitals. And um, we've got to ensure that our future is solid. So I'm a strong believer in investing in today to ensure the outcomes that we want tomorrow. Regarding the uh, housing issue, uh, do you feel from your other legislators that this is a priority for them? And do you think we're going to get something done on that front during this short session? Oh, I think I think every legislator is hearing it. You know, in Portland. Um, we see, right, driving around town, the houseless issue, um, but it's all over the state um, and, and to varying degrees. Um, so I, I, I know we're going to address this and we're going to put uh, all of our efforts in the legislature to, do it, legislature to doing what we can um, to ensure that our, our counties and our local jurisdictions have the funds that they need to um, address housing going forward. Governor Brown is proposing a $200 million workforce package called Future Ready Oregon, uh, targeting health care, manufacturing, and construction. Uh, what do you think about that proposal, and would you make any changes to it? You know, again, as a nurse, as somebody who's been a leader on the health care front, I think it's extremely important that we invest in our health care workers. Uh, we know that a lot of the large job growth in the future is going to be in the health care sector. Um, our society continues to get, get older. Um, so we've got to do all that we can to ensure that we've got the nurses, the, re the respiratory therapists, the certified nursing assistants, the home aides um, that we need. So I'm hopeful that that's where we'll see a lot of the investments go. Governor Brown also asking for $125 million to relocate Harriet Tubman Middle School in North Portland to get away from the air pollution issues posed by a proposed I-5 freeway expansion. Uh, do you think Tubman should be relocated? And how serious do you think this air pollution issue is? Well, I will say that I have a lot more listening to do. I was only recently appointed and, and launched my campaign uh, late last fall. Um, but based on what I've heard, uh, it sounds like Harriet Tubman does need to be re relocated. Um, community has to be involved in that decision. Um, but it's right next to I-5, and we know that air pollution um, is a problem, and we know that those students there are largely students of color. 
Um, so we've got to do the right thing and um, and look at look at the options when it comes to where to move Harriet Tubman and make sure that the community is involved in those decisions. One of the more interesting proposals being considered allowing Oregonians to pump their own gas. I know in the uh, you know just in the the hierarchy of things that are really important that we have to deal with in this state that might be lower on the list, but it has become a high profile issue. Is that something that you would like to see happen? You know, <laughs> uh, this is to me strangely a controversial issue here in Oregon. Uh, I grew up just across the river in Washington state where folks pump their own gas, um, but it's not something that a lot of Oregonians are used to. Uh, we know that rural Oregonians currently are pumping their own gas, um, but I, I, I don't think there should be any change to the, to the current law. Um, folks here in Oregon are largely used to pumping their own, or, or excuse me, having someone pump their uh, gas, and in rural Oregon, they're already pumping their own gas. Um, I don't see a need to, to change the law, but I'm, I'm open to hearing, um, hearing more. All right, so uh, you're, you're well aware, having uh, gone to school in Washington State, you know how to do it. So there's no, uh, <laughs> there's no problem with you being able to go through the whole process of pumping your own gas here, right? No, no, no. I, I know how to pump my own gas, and I'm sure Oregonians know how to pump their own gas. But, you know, there are issues um, when it comes to the jobs that, that, that are currently in place. Um, you know, we have um, people who depend on pumping other people's gas, and there's um, uh, I'd, I'd hate to see those jobs go away if the system that we currently have here um, and in Portland in particular is working. Yeah, we've uh, talked about jobs. Uh, we have talked about housing. Uh, what about economic development? What do you see in terms of uh, how the state's economy is going? And uh, is there anything that you'd like to see the legislature do in order to keep that engine going? Yeah, well, Oregon's economy is largely doing well. The country's economy is largely doing well. Uh, thank you, President Biden. Um, that said, um, we have got to continue to invest in the future. The economy will not always do great. Um, we've got to invest in, in our workforce, um, and we've got to do uh, all that we can to ensure that our um, small businesses are, are thriving here in Oregon. Representative Travis Nelson, thank you for joining us on Ion Northwest Politics. Thank you so much, Ken.